welcome to another episode of Raising Awareness. Vincent, I think this is season five. You've been Yay. doing this for five years now. Uh, longer than that. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> uh, it's closer to seven, but it, we did really bunch up the previous episodes as seasons. As necessarily. Okay. Well, so seven years condensed yeah. down into five seasons. How have you been? Good. Yeah? Yeah. Great. Well, um... You found some, uh, as usual, we have some questions that you found. Yes, from... but first, a sh couple of shout-outs. Oh, yeah. Um, means. Hills, <laughs> which is literally right down the street. Hills Cafe, they got great breakfast and great coffee. But, and I want to also shout-out my Uncle Bruce's store, Barrier Liberty, because he bought my coffee today. <laughs> So I said I would chat about in the episode. Excellent. And you got caffeinated, which is very important. Yes. <laughs> and it's actually going to relate to one of the questions in the second part. Well, that is, that is I can't wait for that segue. That sounds great. Um, so as usual, you've put together some questions from the community yep. um, about uh, life with disabilities or loved ones with disabilities. And then you found a few hot topics to to dive yep. into. So we'll start uh, right off the bat with uh, the first question. How has disabilities affected what jobs you can get? Well, that's a itchy topic that we've covered before, but it's good to get that refresher. Um, basically, it depends on the disability. For me, I'm better, I'm not gonna be the type to say in the office because of my ADHD. Seriously, it'd be, Suicidal for a company to have me sit at a desk. <laughs> Just uh, that's not not within your skill set. <laughs> with ADHD, you would have better luck having me as your janitor than <laughs> as your office worker. <laughs> Do you find that your uh, ADHD um, gives you advantages and uh, enhances certain working like strengths? A, take ADHD for example. It, basically gets me a reserve of energy that most people would kill for. <laughs> like, basically, me with ADHD is the equivalent of the energy reserves of someone after two pots of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and I have, I've, I've noticed um, several of my loved ones with uh, autism or, or attention issues I noticed they that they pace a lot and yeah. and fiddle more than I fiddle a little bit, but it does like I've recognized that that yeah. energy that they have that seems like they're not sure what to put that energy into. So yeah. like a work environment that could utilize that energy seems like it would be not yeah. only a benefit to the employer but a benefit to that person looking for like, that energy outlet. Like take my current job for example. Card attendant. That is a job where you have to be moving <laughs> sure. a lot. Right. And you have to be on your feet a lot. An employer would definitely love to have someone with ADHD who's taking his medicine for, for good reason. Sure. And has good customers, good response of this. To, because someone with ADHD could actually outpace someone who does it. Sure. Well, let me ask you this. Um, do you find your work fulfilling? I find these interviews more fulfilling than my work, but <laughs> I, it's not like I don't hate my work. It's just, it's a job. I get paid. <laughs> Mutually <But>, beneficial. <laughs> yeah. And I do like the fact that it's a more active job. Than sure. my previous one. Okay. Well, that's great. Um, well, uh, is it okay if I jump around in the question list a little bit? Go ahead. Um, because you mentioned, uh, as we were talking about, you know, what an employer might like with somebody with ADHD, you said somebody who's taking their medicine for good reason. And there was a question a little further down the list. Um, my husband has ADHD and is fasting from his medicine for Lent. Um, since he wants to test his faith when he 
when he doesn't have his medicine. He already got approval from his doctors and his therapists, which I'm sure is very important. Yeah, um, obviously. Uh, to do this, should I? How, how could I? And or should I help him through this fasting process? Now, originally, I was worried about his work, but as it turns out, it he works at his church and gets paid to do various things around there. So, I'm pretty sure if. He's already told them that he's doing this for Lent, which is not quite here yet, but it's coming. So, he should be fine with his job, just as long as his church is aware. Now, sure. for the wife specifically, bring caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> Bring caffeine and sugar. <laughs> that is your that is the biggest way you could help it because stimuli like caffeine and sugar will actually calm it down. Now he did say anything about giving up caffeine or anything. So that will help. Now when he is at home, um Make sure that he is able to get to alone time because someone with ADHD, if he is going around with his kids or things like that, it's going to be hard for him to actually rest. Oh, okay. So he's going to need that alone time to actually get to calm down. Maybe uh, with, like, being conscious of bringing noise levels down or distractions? Uh, no, nope. uh, only when he's about to go to sleep. Okay. When he is running and going, um, don't worry so much about the noise level. Just keep it calm on the, on the act on it when he's ready for bed and also be ready for him to go to bed possibly late at night <laughs> because ADHD people if they don't get that time to unwind or sometimes even if they do sometimes they don't fall asleep until 11 12 sometimes 1 in the morning okay so it's a top tough topic that is not gonna it's gonna be relatively hard for him to unwind sure so so maybe uh, the advice might be to be patient um, with that's gonna be something that I'm assuming she's already done <laughs> sure <laughs> so this is more directed towards her she's gonna have to be aware of of various things like he will be distracted his kids will influence him easily just get him that low time aid bring play of caffeine and sugar all right <laughs> um okay uh, and by the way that was going to be the question for the second half right yeah i skipped around a little bit i yeah. apologize um how do disability? Because you have you have ADHD and Asperger's and mood disorder and mood disorder. Um, how does and I don't know how much this question speaks specifically to how your three interact versus another person's. But the question is, how do multiple um, disabilities interact with each other within the same person? Um, it varies greatly, like. Take a classic example of ADHD and autism, um, which I have. Um, depending on what version of ADD or ADHD you have and what version of autism you have. Because they're, they're wide spectrums, that, right? Yeah, uh, relatively. They can ma manifest in many different ways. Yeah, they could make the person almost a social hermit all the way to the awkward, energetic kid in his adult years. <laughs> <laughs> so it can vary. Would, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of the best way to word it, does, 
like somebody suffering from perhaps a single issue, um, would do you think that's easier to? Does it make it more structured or easier to deal with? Does having multiple disabilities complicated uh, at all? Or? Uh, depends on the disabilities again, but okay. for the most part, you're if there. It's generally a rule of thumb that the more disabilities you have, the more the research you should do, and the more you should be concerned about in terms of possible events. Like, I've never really mentioned my mood disorder because most people who know me know I am typically calm, but my mood disorder specifically is a triggered based one. Okay. And my trigger doesn't come off at often at all. Like, I could count on one hand the number of times in the last year it happened. Okay. So, but still something you want to be aware of and build tools to, to deal with. Yeah, and my dad trained me very well to control my mood disorder. So, so even if I was to be triggered, the person who triggered me might not see it. Okay. Oh, well, that's, uh, that's good, and hopefully you have the, the resources available to you to, to keep making progress and... I will say this. The person in question wanted to know about dyslexia and Asperger's and whether or not it was a possible combination. Um, I don't know dyslexia that much, but according to generally, it's a cerebral issue, basically. So, generally, certain most Asperger's people, it's not impossible. I'm saying that right now. It's not impossible. But it's very unlikely that his form of autism is Asperger's because anyone with cerebral issues cannot really have Asperger's. Specifically. Oh, okay. Because you need to have higher brain function and cerebral issues require lower that. Okay, so there might be a, a conceptual conflict there. Well, uh, Vincent, I always learn so much when you're here. Uh, I really enjoy talking with you. We're going to take a little break, and when we come back, we'll hit one more question and then get into some hot topics. Yep. All right, see you in a minute. See you in a minute. We are MCTV, Midshore Community Television. We want your help in making our station more robust so that we can better serve the residents of Talbot County. So, how can you help? If you are already making video content, submit that content for broadcast to the station. It's free! Are you involved in events, shows, or lectures that would be of interest to the community? We can work with you to figure out the best way to capture those events for airing on MCTV. Be it training, equipment rental, or hiring our production staff to film at a reasonable rate. Do you want to produce your own show? Let us help you get started. Come be a part of this valuable community resource. Email the station at nick at avalonfoundation.org or visit us in the basement of the historic Avalon Theater at 40 East Dover Street in downtown Easton. Welcome back to Raising Awareness. I am Nick Richards, and here, as always, is Vincent Sism. Um, we got one more question to get to, and then we'll jump into into those hot topics. So, uh, my grandson, not my grandson, the, the questioner's grandson, has ADHD, but he seems to be tired a lot when he is here. Could he be misdiagnosed, and is there anything I should be concerned about? Now... A few factors could go into this. I mean, he is, the grandson is 15, and, but he's on new medicine, so it's a low. So, depending on what medicine it is, it could be causing him to be more lethargic. It could also be various disabilities. So, generally, um, 
it's not impossible that he was misdiagnosed, but I'm leaning towards him not being misdiagnosed. Yeah. Because 15 year old, anyone in high school can tell you, even people with ADHD are gonna have low energy. Now, depending on if he's low energy throughout the time he's with his grandfather, which I'm assuming is the weekends, um, it could be school, it could be his medicine, he may be misdiagnosed, but if he's just tired the first day he gets there and then he's fine the rest, then, and for what I understand, the Grandfather said that he was low energy the first day and still lower energy than he was when he previously before his new medicine. So I'm thinking the medicine has some energy. I, I would certainly think that it's... I, I would check out the medicine issue with a doctor before jumping to the misdiagnosis conclusion. And, yeah, and test that. I do out. agree with that. Um, apparently, he's only been on it for a month. So. Sure, and there's with with any kind of medication, there's the potential for side effects that you need yeah. to monitor. Yeah, but and, if it is a side effect of the medicine, then it may actually be a good medicine for him because, unfortunately, one of the issues with ADHD is that. He is going to have to be really energized, which is both a good and bad thing. Sure. So, if he was, if he's more lethargic, it'll teach him to keep his energies in check better. Sure. So, maybe it has a positive aspect, but it's not a... I would not say right now that he's misdiagnosed. I'd lean towards more the medicine. Sure. And the fact that he's 15. Anyone, <laughs> right. <laughs> anyone, depending on what school he goes to and if he does any extracurriculars, him being tired is almost to be expected. Sure. Yeah, there's there's a lot of physical growth during that age and, and that does wear you out, let alone the regular activities of school sports and things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I will say this. If he's more regularly as extracurricular, then it may, it's more definitely the best in that regard because the first few times you do an extracurricular, depending on what it is, it, let's generalize with sports, he could just be tired for doing dev new, but if he's more, if he's been doing it for a year or two, then it's more likely the medicine, because sure. at that point, his body will be conditioned for yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's shift over to Hot Topics. Now, I, I'm interested to hear what makes these some of these particular ones hot topics because the first one you just have Facebook um, but actually I'll use that as an opportunity to point out some of our social media stuff fair enough um, because raising awareness in addition to you saying it on mature community television uh, airwaves is also on the mature community YouTube channel which you yeah. know uh, so that's youtube.com slash mature community television and you can find I think Almost all, if not all, of your episodes there. The only one that's not on there is the first one, but I'm not letting that one <laughs> see the light of day. That, that was a practice episode, right? The, More or less. Working out the tech issues So and if things. you look at the playlist and you see Razor Wear the 6 through 2, but you don't see one, that's one. <laughs> 2 is the official start of Razor Awareness. Yeah. Well, it's... I, I was just... We were looking at the playlist just before we got here, and it was cool to see how much we've populated that playlist, you've, how much content you've created, how, yeah. how many conversations we've had, how much you've talked with the community through this. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, check, check out the YouTube channel. In addition to Raising Awareness, there's all the shows we do, um, but it's a, it's a good place to catch that content. Um, yeah. So that brings us to Facebook. Oh, boy. <laughs> I've been hearing some things about Facebook recently. Okay. Um, 
mostly sensory things. Oh, okay. okay. Like, Facebook is one of the biggest social medias in the world, if not the biggest, but it's going sensor happy. And I've got various stories. Like, the first one I saw, Facebook censored a private message between two people because it goes against the community standards. Okay. Like, censoring, I'm not a fan of it in general, but when you go to private messaging, it's going too far. And you want to know what it was that was censored? A link to a Bible study video. Now, how is, and, um, it, that's interesting because it doesn't seem like a Bible study video would be against Facebook's community standards. You're right, but it's gained censored left and right. Like, there are multiple stories where anything biblical is gained censored hmm. on Facebook. Okay. Like... I'm shocked that any church group would want to get beyond there. And Facebook is also censoring things like Nike. Like this one and the next thing that's being censored is coming from my landlord. Thank you, Missy. Um, <laughs> but Facebook is censoring Nike and Imposed like she tried to sell some Nike items and she put Nike in there and she got a 24 hour ban, huh? From Facebook, like she could see posts, but she couldn't post herself. Okay, I'd be really interested to hear what the justification was like, what why they claimed that that uh, was worthy of being blocked. Yeah, or being banned worthy. Yeah. Not to mention, um, it also blocks candles. <laughs> like, like one of my landlord's friends, she posts, it's selling candles, Yankee candles. Yeah. That person got a tw forty-eight hour ban. Huh. So hmm. it's like seriously, Facebook. <laughs> Come on. Now, what would you say to um, the like in in terms of Facebook and censorship? I know they're uh, struggling right now with um, um, the fake news stories. The um, particularly particularly in terms of political ads and misinformation uh, about candidates. Where do you feel that line should be? Personally, um, involving fake news, which um, basically treat it as if it's real news until it has been proven false. Like, okay. like until it's been proven false, let go. Uh, and then once it's proven false, then what, you can block it. Then it's then you think Facebook should be blocking. I wouldn't necessarily block it, but I say label it as having big fake news. Don't okay. block it. But it's their new terms of service also is worrying me because now their new terms of service. According to the terms of service, you cannot incite violence or anyone against anyone except those who have been labeled by Facebook as a dangerous individual, including people who have been banned permanently from Facebook for wrong thing. The, so the, the Facebook terms of service, you you're saying allows you to incite violence against those that have been blocked or banned. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I, you know, certainly if that's the case, it, it, 
Facebook is that doesn't really seem good. okay. Yeah, I mean, Facebook, get your act together. <laughs> I know you don't want Trump to win, but, and that goes for Google as well. They're t really quiet anyone who has a conservative mindset. So, right now, because I've seen play a story where conservative mindset people are being viewed block, viewed limited on, on, on YouTube, various other things. So, it's sad. Okay. Um, well, let's hit the next hot topic here. The Super Bowl. Congratulations to the Tennessee Titans. The um, Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs. Kansas yep. City Chiefs, sorry. <laughs> um, congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs. Sorry about that. Um, personally, I wasn't going to care if unless the Ravens got it. Sure. That, <laughs> that's just me. And I'm no longer a Steelers fan, so them not making the playoffs didn't affect me. <laughs> I'm not rooting against them. I'm just not with them anymore. Yeah. I, uh, I'm not particularly a, a sports guy, but I did watch the Super Bowl, and it was a good game. Yeah. It was uh, uh, with that uh, kind of come behind in the, in the last six minutes. As the two minutes. teams, I was rooting for the 49ers. Okay. So. <laughs> I mean, me personally, I was rooting for them, mainly because they... Um, John Harbaugh's brother is the coach for the 49ers. So, brotherly, some brotherly love there. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted both teams to have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and for what I said, they did. Um, and uh, bringing us uh, to the end here, and it's a topic that I know we're both passionate about. What's your hot topic on video games for this episode? Well, video games, I'm going to be talking about some new ones. Okay. I, like, haven't, I haven't stayed up to date on what's coming out. So. Um, recent ones, not too recent. Uh, Pokemon Masters came out last year. Okay. And it's... A really good game. I just got it for my new tablet just a few days ago, and I'm enjoying it a ton. Um, various other games that are... Um, Smash just finished up its DLC, its first Fighters Pass. Okay. So, there's, a, there's five new characters in Smash, if you want them. Okay. Um, let's see... Um, uh, some bad news involving video games. Uh, Warcraft, Warcraft Three Reforged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's put it this way. Um, you could almost say it's been review bombed to death to the point <laughs> where it's currently on Metacritic having a point five. Ouch. <laughs> user score. Ouch. And to put it in perspective. The Xbox One version of Ghostbusters used to have a point seven. <laughs> so if anyone's played that, oh my gosh, they are concerned. <laughs> it's currently being boosted just because people wanted this game to be the worst user rated game on uh, Okay. But I mean his it's got so many different problems it's ridiculous like cr the it sometimes doesn't always load it had false advertisements it's it has um it's cutscenes were not what they advertise that's mainly the false advertisement graphics not much of an improvement not to mention if you Make a custom game in it is not owned by you, is owned by Blizzard. Blizzard. No. <laughs> which didn't used to be the case. And it's ridiculous. <laughs> so, do not recommend. You, do not you, you, recommend. Not, that's a one star uh, <laughs> Yelp review. Uh, how about this? How about. 
you should, if you have a Blizzard client, you should be requesting this game for free. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> oh, and one other thing, and this personally upsets me, they replaced the version of, the classic version of Warcraft 3 on their client, so even if you wanted to play the classic and not the new version, you don't have the option. Right. Even if you didn't buy the new version, it just updates to the new version. Okay. Wow. That's ridiculous. Never do that, developers. Never. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Vincent, thanks for coming in again. Like I said, every, every time you come in, I, I learn a lot, and um, I, I think what you're doing here is fantastic, uh, reaching out to the community, and we'd certainly love the community to be reaching back out to us, um, engage with us, uh, watch us on the station, uh, but particularly find us on YouTube, and, uh, you know, comment and, and subscribe and yeah. check us out that way. Yeah. All right. We'll see you in a couple months for yep. the next I episode. I think the next one's going to be in April. Okay. Excellent. April and, uh, or May. Don't any, know which. Any closing words for us? Just... Oh, oh, never judge a book by its cover. Its pages might surprise you. And those pages can help you out someday. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>